In this lesson, we will talk about data validation. I'm here with the program we created for the grades of the student. Let's talk about some problems that might occur in this program. Here there's no data validation. So even grades being from 0 to 10, I can type 100 by accident and the program is going to accept it. Another problem is that if I type a string, our program crashes, which is really bad. Let's see how we can do basic data validation using loops. Then, in the next lesson, we will keep our program from crashing by doing error handling. So before asking for user input, I'm going to create a variable called data valid. And I'm going to assign to it a value of false. So let's start a loop like this while data valid equals false. So now this test is going to return true because data valid is equal to false. So we are going to go inside this loop. Then we're going to ask for the grade. And now we're going to make the validation. So if grade one is less than zero or grade one is greater than 10, then we're going to do something. So now we are using the OR operator. And like I told you, if one of the tests results true, the whole test is going to result true. So if this happens, it's because we have an invalid input. In this case, we're going to print grade should be between 0 and 10. And then we're just going to continue in this loop. So the continue will jump out of the loop and start it again. Then we complete with an else statement because if this is not true, it means that we have valid input. So in this case, what we're going to do is make data valid equals true. And when we do it, we're going to end the loop. And when it tries to run again, this test is going to return in false. So it's not going to go inside the loop and it's going to continue with our program. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for grade two. So let's copy all this. We're going to have to set the value of data valid to false again. So this is grade two and grade two. Now, before we continue, let's test if this is working. So let's try minus 10. So it doesn't work. It says grade should be between 0 and 10. Let me try 11. It doesn't let us. So now our program only accepts number between 0 and 10. So let's try 8. And now it's asking for the grade of the second test. I'm going to try again. So minus 10. So it doesn't let us. All right, let's continue. For the absences in total classes, let's do something similar, but let's change the order and ask for the total classes first. So let's copy this structure here. Let's ask for the total number of classes, and then the tests we're going to do It's just going to be if total classes are less than zero because we can't have a negative number here. But we won't put any limitation for the number of classes. Actually, this is going to be a bit different because we can't have zero classes. We can have a grade zero, but we can't have zero classes. So this is going to be less than or equal to. In this case, we're going to tell the user 
The number of classes can't be zero or less. Now let's do the same thing for the absences. Now we won't accept absences less than zero. We can accept zero, so let's put it like this. And we can't accept a number of absences greater than the total classes. So let's do absences greater than total classes. In this case, we're going to print the number of absences can't be less than zero or greater than the number of total classes. All right, now let's run it and see what happens. So we just tested the grades, but let's do it again. So it doesn't accept. So let's try eight and eight. Now the number of classes, let's try minus 5, and it doesn't accept it, so let's put it 20, and something went wrong here. So here's what happened, I forgot to set the data valid to false again. So we never enter this loop, and when we try to do the calculations, this variable didn't exist because we never entered here. So now this should be working. That's why it's always good to test our program. So let's try again, eight, eight, 20. And now let's try a negative number. And the validation is working fine. And now let's try 25. And again, we can't type a number greater than the total number of classes. So let's try five. And now our program continues and outputs the result. This is much better but our program still crashes if we type in a string. So in the next lesson, we are going to do some error handling. I'll see you then.